Hello everyone. Ah, uh, I did not foresee Nigeria's challenges, says Tinubu, despite claiming 20 years of preparation. This is the headline by Parallel Facts. And so I think there was an interview that was done by one of his SSE where he was talking about Tinubu and the fact that the challenges on ground, he did not expect it. <sighs> so I'm a bit confused here, right? So I'm thinking you grabbed it, you ran with it, you sold it. You were so invested on rigging election and getting into office by whatever means possible that you didn't really sit down to actually check what the problem. So of course, what am I even talking about? He really doesn't care about the problems, but it's so, you know, so pathetic hearing this from someone who is said to be a master strategist. Like I've always said, Tinubu is a master strategist with no strategy. And it's really, it speaks to the kind of people we have around the corridor of power, how, what it is all about for them, it's how much power they can grab and use it for their own personal gain. You know, you got to be in control, be in charge of doing this, you know, sending people to do this, making this, uh, it doesn't make law, but technically uh, signing laws into place, you know, asking for this to be done and all, that's all it means to them uh, uh, to be in power. That's what being in power is, it is to them. Not the fact that you're supposed to change lives, you're supposed to make differences, you're supposed to do something. And that, that's why from now, even when I look at it, I think about it, when people talk to me about maybe like run for office and stuff like that, I'm like, look, I'm not, I, I'm not ready in the sense that that service, they always feel like, oh, is it that you think you can't win? There's one particular one, someone said, oh, are you afraid that you lose that? Like me. Losing something has never been something I'm afraid of. In short, I always like, let me lose it and continue. That's one thing I'm very strong at. It, it doesn't faze me. Why would it be about winning? It's not just about winning. For me, serving is not just oh, me running for office because I know that I'm going to win. That I would have run for office a long time. Even under this table party, I literally was calling people to run for office. Like, look, this is going to be there's a game changer. After answers, there was a shift in the in the country that a lot of people were not paying attention. So for me, it's not about running for office. And even for certain places, you know, when people say, I'm like, if there's someone who is doing the work, they're doing it very well, why do I need to extend myself? I try to run for office or all, all of that. But when you see some of this mindset that some of these people display, it, it just shows you that for a good number of them, that's just what it is, it is all about. It's just all about how can they get into office and then use it for personal gain or you know be able to say that oh they were once in this office and that for me personally i don't have to be in a political uh office or an elected office for me to be able to make impact i can make impact whether in it or outside of it and so it, it the most important is what positive impact are you making am i making if you're not making positive impact why are you doing that but anyway me i'm just here blowing grammar Tinibu don't send anybody papa you don't send do now as far as it's concerned, grab it, run with it, whatever, rig it, get into office. That is all that matters. And that's exactly uh, what he has done. But let's, let's, let me read out uh, what parallel facts have here. It says, Chief Bola Tinibu, former governor of Lagos State, has admitted to a lack of foresight regarding Nigeria's challenges despite asserting over two decades of readiness for leadership. In an interview with Business Day, Tinubu Special Advisor on Information and Strategy Bio Onanuga revealed insights into the administration's struggle since taking office in May 2023. Onanuga disclosed that upon assuming office, Tinubu was confronted with the harsh re reality of Nigeria's financial predicament. I mean, this is pre uh, financial predicament that Peter B literally was talking about every time, even when he had that uh, meeting he had with. Um, I think it was the screening of the NWC when he was still in PDP, literally talked about the fact that there is no money to be shared. Nigeria is in serious financial quagmire. There's a whole lot of problem on ground. But of course, what was what was happening? Oh, the, the Peter Obi was being attacked left, right, and center. They are the ones who say they were strategists and knew what everything was about. But for me, the real solace that I take in all of this is that majority of the people did not vote for Tinibu. They voted for Peter Obi. Yes, Tinibu did rig his way into office. I mean, anybody can criminally do something. It doesn't mean that that is uh, what it was that obtained. 
Coming back, he said, Onanuga disclosed that upon assuming office, Tinubu was confronted with the harsh reality of Nigeria's financial predicament. Despite prior assurances, the administration found itself grappling with severe economic crisis, including currency devaluation and foreign exchange instability. The decision to swiftly remove oil subsidies underscored the gravity of the, situ gravity of the situation, revealing a government unprepared for the depth of the challenges. Reflecting on the administration's stance towards the previous regime, Onanuga highlighted Tinibu's reluctance to assign blame, emphasizing the inherited liabilities overshadowing any assets. However, underlining tensions within the ruling party proud to Tinibu's accession further complicated the transition, casting doubts on the internal cohesion necessary for effective governance. Addressing concerns over state police implementation as a potential solution to insecurity, Onanuga reiterated the government's commitment to ongoing discussion. They acknowledged the complexity of the, uh, of the issue. By the way, it's an Ill illegitimate government. Uh, despite widespread support, tangible progress remains el elusive with, with bureaucratic holders slowing down necessary reforms. You know the things about Nigeria and the way we normally do our things is that we just grab on something. So, oh, it needs to be done. And that's it. They just, they just begin to talk. Proper planning. What are the things that need to be put in place? What are the, what, what is needed and all of that? We never do that. They are not interested in that. It's, oh, it's romantic to not say uh, state police. I am for state police anytime, any day. But the right thing has to be put in place, the right structure, the necessary laws, everything. There's so many things that have to be put in place before we get to that stage of finally, you know, it's being implemented. But hey, we always put the the cart before the, is it the cart before the horse or the horse before the car? How do they normally say that thing? We always do that. We will jump and we will not start from the real ground zero and put in the thing. We just jump on the uh, on the thing that, you know, uh, it's always about the optics and not necessarily about the issue as it's supposed to be. Regarding economic uh, policies, Onanuga stressed the importance of inward investment and backward integration, particularly within the manufacturing sector. However, he also uh, uh, urged Nigerians to reassess priorities, advocating for reduced reliance on foreign currencies for education and leisure activities above, abroad. Meanwhile, they are all, every this thing, the same people, the same, the illegitimate government went to go and do a conference in London. They didn't do it in Nigeria. It is people's education and people's health that the education that they have killed in Nigeria, that people are trying to give their children good education. That's what they are ha happening upon. But they went to go and do a conference. The uh, this thing, uh, Office of the Accountant General of the Federation went and brought in how many all the all the uh, Commissioner of Finance in, of the different 36 states and other of their members. They all went to London to go and do a treatment there, uh, to go and do a meeting. When it comes to conversation like that, they are not always thinking about you know the fact that they should have done it locally. It is individuals that they, that they sit down. When they took thousands of people to Dubai, that was not something that they felt they would sit down and talk about. It's always about individuals, what individuals are doing to improve themselves and improve their children in spite of all the uh, all the decay that they've allowed to happen uh, in a Nigerian uh, system. The government has allowed to happen. That's what they always uh, keep on harping upon. And then, uh, responding to criticism over uh, government transparency, Onanuga defended the administration's handling of information dissemination, citing ongoing efforts to address systemic challenges. However, he acknowledged the need for improved communication and accountability moving forward. On the issue of minimum wages, uh, wage negotiation, Onanuga echoed Tinubu's caution, emphasizing the government's financial constraint and means infl inf inflationary pressures. While acknowledging the plight of workers, he understood the need for fiscal prudence and sustainable economic policies. Fiscal prudence, and yet they still go on. They've not reduced the cost of governance. They keep doing what they want to do with people's wealth. But when it comes to the people themselves, anything that has to do with improving the lives of the people, that's the one that always takes the fast thing. Anyway, thank you so much uh, for watching. And please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. Thank you. Bye.